It was during this period in which the Jews were being expelled from Arabia that Ka'ab al-Akbar, a Jew from Yemen who had converted to Islam, would appear. He would travel halfway across the peninsula to come to Medina, and his presence there in the seat of the caliphate would significantly influence Islamic tradition. Ka'ab al-Akbar is a um, fascinating figure. Okay, fascinating figure. It means the associate. Associate of what? Some theories say associate of a, of a, a midrash or a madrasa, a Jewish school, okay? Uh, it meant that he had some sort of a rabbinic uh, authority or rabbinic education. It is believed that he was, he was uh, a, a Jewish scholar before he converted to Islam. Uh, and that uh, when he converted to Islam, he was very active in educating Muslims about uh, Jewish sources, uh, you know, a lot of writings are referred to him as a very uh, educated um, Jewish scholar. Ka'ab al-Akbar's arrival would prove fortuitous. His Jewish background meant that he was intimately familiar with Hebrew traditions. It was through his teachings that the interpretation of the Quran would come to incorporate biblical and folk stories from Jewish culture. Thanks to Ka'ab al-Akbar, the early Muslims were introduced to the major figures of Judaism. Moses would become Musa. Joseph, Abraham's great-grandson, would become Yusef. King David became Daoud. And his son Solomon, who built the temple in Jerusalem, became Suleiman. The stories that came from Ka'ab al-Akbar and his successors are collectively known as the Israeliyat. Large segments of Jewish tradition thus became integrated into Muslim culture through these narratives. <laughs> 